Hello, Ali here with a definitive guide to images in HTML documents. I know we already started on image elements in practice or live coding videos, but covering all the features of images while coding meant multiple videos, so the information was being scattered all along. So I decided to cover all the features of HTML images in one video, and we shall practice in others, keeping information and practice separate and concentrated. So here goes the information part. An HTML image tag, also known as image element or rather image embed element, is a way to instruct browser that you need to insert or embed an image at specified location at this particular location in the web page. This is different from background image where we specify background image as style for a container and it repeats and do all kind of stuff with that. Here we are doing an active embed via proper HTML element. Usually the image is inserted at the exact location where it occurs in the HTML document, but there are tons of ways to manipulate its location alongside text, covering a vast number of use cases. So image element is defined by less than sign image IMG tag and technically adds as a holding space for referenced image. There are two required attributes of image tag, source and art. Source attribute contains the absolute or relative path for the image and it's not necessary for image to be located on the same web server as the HTML document. The alt attribute acts as a placeholder text for the image until browser is able to download the image from source and replace the placeholder with actual image. All kind of things can go wrong in that process and that is why alt is a required attribute. It is also critical for SEO or search engine optimization where search engines like Google scan your web page to include it in their index. They never download the image they just analyze contents of your page using text only. Well, who knows what they do, but apparently they don't bother downloading images and alt tag plays a big role in indicating content information to them. Lastly, unrelated, did you know there exist text only browsers which do not load image at all? There are plenty of use cases for that. So unless you are building a dummy web page for a tutorial or something, alt tag is something you should properly fill in. A hint is that the image tag would still work if you don't specify the R tag, but it won't be a proper HTML document in that case. Image tag is a special HTML element compared to many others like paragraph, hyperlink, span, etc. in the sense that browser can't immediately process it completely. It is not a complete element at all. It is just a reference to an entity external to HTML document. And X just has a holding space or embed marker for what is to come. Browser has to process image tag in parts. Upon encountering the image tag, the browser evaluates the source attribute, initiates a GET request for that resource to the server where it is located, reserves a little bit of space for the image, and moves on to the next element. And don't be confused by the GET request part. It simply means browser requests the image contents from that server, be it the one hosting the HTML document or any other specified by the source attribute. Anyway, the moving on to next part is critical for performance reasons. As if browser stops at this stage to wait for the image, your web page would remain a wide screen for a potentially long, long time. Something you can't afford with your impatient visitors who would move away if they don't see anything tangible within seconds. So while the image downloads, the text-based elements, or let's say elements with complete information, continue to be rendered or displayed on the screen and user experiences a web page taking shape even without images. Depending on browser to browser, an image reservation box with an alt tag is shown to the user so that he expects an image to show up there or just the alt tag or nothing. It's totally up to the browser. So when server, be it the same or different, where you requested image to be downloaded from, responds, the first bytes of image content generally contain its size in terms of height and width. It is at that time the browser actually knows how much area the image actually needed on the screen or web page. If it was the same as reserved space, everything is cool. But generally, which is a polite way of saying never, it is the case. And browser has already rendered text content before and after that space already. Now it has to make room for the image and that results in moving content around to make room. Kind of like blowing a balloon in middle of web page, pushing everything aside, resulting in something commonly known as flickering, layout shifting, or content jumping. If users hate anything more than waiting, it is the layout shifting. You hate it too, you just didn't realize as you didn't have name for it yet. Next time you see it happening, you would hate the website and the web developer behind it. And as we shall discuss in later performance videos, it costs in terms of time as well, 
So verse of both words. One final word before we conclude this section is that if you missed how to see browser queuing up images as soon as it encounters and how content jumping or flickering looks like, do refer to our video HTML images plus introduction to HTML rendering where we demonstrate it live using Chrome developer tools. And that brings us to two more attributes that should have been required but are not and should be for you. And these are height and width. These either let the browser know the dimensions of the image or force it to squeeze or expand the image to these dimensions. Either way, it provides a way for browser to reserve sufficient space for image before downloading it and prevents flickering and time saving as browser doesn't have to recalculate and re-render already painted content, which are costly operations in terms of time consumed. And believe it or not, time in units of fractions of milliseconds matter when it comes to website performance. More on that later. Width and height are generally specified in units of pixels. There, is, there are a bunch of supported units of measure in HTML and CSS world. Most common ones are PX or pixel and percentage for images and EM or REM for text and VH or VW for viewport specific CSS. There are others which we won't cover here since it's not the topic, though I feel compelled to say that though inches, millimeters and centimeters are also possible values, Avoid them until you are doing some print specific task. Otherwise, you would not get desired results on the screen. Modern browsers offer support for a whole bunch of image formats, including BMP, JPG, GIF, APNG, PNG, and SVG. SVG is the recommended from W3C as it is small and can be stretched or shrunk without any distortion. BMP, of course, is the worst, and some browsers actively deny using that format as it is a verse in terms of size and takes forever to download. GIF is widely used format to add animations to a web page. The two important factors to consider choosing the image are its size and how well it distorts when scaled up or down in dimensions. We haven't gone through CSS yet in our series and so the term block or inline would be introduced later on, but just know this for now. There is a default display style associated with every element in HTML, most common of which are block and inline. A block element would occupy the entire width of its container and not allow any other element to render by its side. In other words, browser would reserve an entire row, height of which is determined by height of the element itself, for the element. An inline element, by comparison, is a lot more accommodating it would just take space required for itself in both height and width. Images are inline elements, and as you shall discover in our practice videos later in series, allow other elements to exist by its side without any gap. Though they do cause distortions like an image of height 100 pixels and existing somewhere in middle of multiple lines of text would cause its entire line to be 100 pixel high. This has potential to make the entire effect ugly if you are not careful. This can be handled by styling, but something that you just need to be aware of at this time. When a web page is rendered on screens with different sizes, orientation, and resolution, the best behaving citizen is usually text. Since it is bite-sized, it can be broken down into smaller parts. The image is generally rebel to change as they are horribly inflexible in most cases. Even in best case scenario where you are using SVG, an image does not pixelate if browser is resized, they are bulky monoliths and would prefer to crop than to rearrange. Images pose the biggest challenge in web page design and therefore the term responsive design or responsive images exist. Though it is a totally separate topic of discussion, we would focus on attributes that let you specify how much an image can be squeezed in response to browser being resized or re-rendered or rendered on smaller screen before it is not resized any further and allowed to crop. Inversely, how much would we allow an image to expand in size before it would start pixelating and distorted? So we won't allow it. The four primary attributes to control these aspects are min width, min height, max width, or max height. In addition to width and height, which specify the initial dimensions of image in normal use cases, max and min attributes specify how image is to respond if their browser is resized. Min and max attributes let your image respond well to browser resize, but not to a situation where a user opens your website on a very small or very large screen, or responding to screen orientation. 
I think it's best to have a separate video on topic of responsive images. So for now, we'll stick to min and max attributes, which are easier. But there are others in HTML5. I would take this opportunity to ask you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss notifications for responsive images video. Even if not for that particular reason, please subscribe anyway, as this course would continue as it has no expiry date and there's a lot of interesting content on the channel both now and upcoming. Right, a very important and easy to use attribute would be loading. It takes two values, lazy and eager. Using the lazy value indicates to the browser that image is not critical to a first view of the web page and is somewhere way down, accessible by excessive scrolling. Trying to download it along with REST when HTML is parsed would potentially choke your network and slow the download of images in critical rendering path as well. Another way to say it is that if your web page has 50 images and only 10 appear in the first fold or top view of your web page, you would want to prioritize 10 over 40. Those 40 can be bejeweled with loading equal to lazy attribute and browser would defer loading them until it reaches a calculated distance from the viewport, which is browser specific. It's on-demand loading. Note eager is the default value if you don't specify it, causing browser to initiate loading of image as soon as image tag is encountered while parsing the HTML. All right, we are done with main attributes of images and let's focus on what can be done with images. So one thing that you can do is caption an image, something that makes a beautiful caption appear alongside the image. This makes use of figure element, which is an HTML5 container element that essentially tells browser that, that elements in my content are related to each other and it has a fig caption sub element, which creates a caption line for the images contained in figure kind of a standardized way to frame an image with a caption. As I mentioned previously, being inline elements, images have an odd relationship with the nearby text elements. But there are a ton of styling options to align images with text, so it can appear left or right of text with text wrapped around it, how much gap there should be, and so on. We shall explore some of these in our practice lab upcoming. Most HTML elements have a border property, which, well, lets you make a border appear around the element. We saw it in one of our live coding videos where list items were enclosed in borders. Another interesting fact about borders is that they have a border radius property that originally intended to round off edges of the border can be aggressively enhanced to cut through the content of the border itself and make the content appear rounded as well. Since border is applicable to image elements, we can give them a rounded appearance. Looks pretty cool. Images can be made part of a hyperlink element to transform the entire image into a giant hyperlink. Such link elements are prettier than ordinary text links and are used in lots of places. You probably came to this video using an image link by clicking on thumbnail of this video. This is easier to do than you think and we shall practice it going forward. We can also give interesting effects like hover effect to indicate to user that the image is actually a clickable link. Though images usually appear where image tag appears in HTML document, we can leverage a bunch of styling properties available in CSS to move it around the web page to a location of your choice. Overriding the default positioning, it, uh, if relying on just the image tag location in HTML alone. You can move an image to corner, center, or rather any position of your choice using CSS. HTML styling has a property called opacity, which is applicable to a lot of elements, if not all of them, I'll need to check though, which allows you to control their transparency. This means you can make an element render normally, semi-transparent, invisible, or anything in between by providing a 0 to 100 number value to opacity style. It's useful in a ton of situations. Did you know you can place some HTML elements on top of another using styling? You can use opacity in all sort of creative ways in that use case. Even otherwise, you can play with opacity to give a nice effect to your images as just plain old normal image is sometimes boring. Since we are on topic of HTML elements ability to be placed on top of each other, let's also consider text placed on, placed on top of images. While we saw captioning which places a caption at standard location near an image, there is no limit to controlling where a text would appear on top of an image, what size would it be, etc. Almost everyone had fun with filters in social media apps and is aware of cool filters that can be applied to images. Well, there are a whole bunch of built-in filters available with HTML, 
which can be applied with hardly a few lines of styling. These include and abs absolutely not limited to blur, grayscale, brightness control, etc. We will play with more, uh, many of them in our practice videos. All right, that is it for our coverage on images. There is more to images than, wait, than what we covered in that video, but I think we covered all important aspects in given time. If you like, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to be notified of upcoming content. Thank you. Goodbye.